going to talk about how I sell in my favorite of all niches. Actually, the very first niche that got everything started back in December of 2014. What's going on, everybody? It is Manny. Welcome back to my channel. Before I get started with today's video, just want to give you a quick reminder to share, like, and subscribe to support the channel. With all of the recent challenges to selling on Amazon, I've been finding more and more of my attention towards my eBay business. And because I'm getting pretty tapped out on my books and my CDs, I've been even more focused on selling in other niches besides media. And that's what today's video is all about. I'm gonna talk about how I sell in my favorite of all niches. Actually, the very first niche that got everything started back in December of 2014. My absolute favorite niche to sell in, my favorite product of all time to sell in that is not books or CDs is of course Magic the Gathering. What the heck is that? Magic the Gathering is a trading card game, uh, otherwise known as a, a TCG. And what you need to know about TCGs is th that they're highly played and highly collectible. Even though there are other trading card games out there, Magic the Gathering has been played for upwards of 30 years. It's absolutely the biggest. Millions of people continue to play and collect those cards. And more than 15,000 cards have been printed. In other words, Magic the Gathering is to trading card games what Dungeons and Dragons is to role-playing games and we all know how collectible and how well Dungeons and Dragons sells in the book niche. Now before I go any further let me go ahead and address the Loxodon hierarch in the room. I'm a dork. I consider myself to be a very very proud dork. I began playing Magic the Gathering back in the early 90s and I haven't played in about 15 years although I did hang on to all of my highly collectible cards. I was a really good player for a little while there and I was able to win as prizes some very rare cards that later in life made me a lot of money. And that's what this is all about to me. The big message that I could give you is that these collectible card games, even though they look like little kid stuff, they are extremely valuable and sell for hundreds and thousands of dollars. Back in December of 2014, I was going through my closet cleaning it out and I came across my old Magic the Gathering card collection. That's how I started selling in the first place. I started selling Magic cards on eBay. I started going through those and realizing that I had some cards that were worth thousands of dollars. I saw that a few months ago, the most expensive Magic card, the Black Lotus, sold on eBay for over $57,000 at auction. And somebody paid for that. There were 44 bids on it. In early 2015, I sold the most expensive item of all that I have ever sold, and that was a Beta Mox Ruby. That one sold for $2,500. So let's get into a little bit of what it takes to sell Magic the Gathering cards and what to look for. The way that Wizards of the Coast prints Magic cards is through sets and expansions. They will print sets of anywhere from 150 all the way up to 300 plus cards. And like anything that is collectible, some will be worth a lot more than others. Cards fall into a couple of specific categories. You have your cards that are common, which means they're reprinted all over the place and they're found way more numerous than other cards. Your uncommons are a little more rare than commons, and then you have cards that are rares. These tend to be among the most valuable cards because there's just not very many of them. From a gameplay standpoint, they also seem to be chased quite a bit by the players and collectors because of how they actually function in the game itself. Now, cards that are printed prior to June of 1998 those are the most difficult to spot as far as rarity because you really do have to handle and know the cards. It's just one of those things that unless you have a price guide, you have to look them up to see if they were common, uncommon, or rare. Beginning in June of 1998 with the Exodus set, Magic the Gathering started doing the players a favor. You no longer had to know right off the top of your head the rarity of a card. They started color coding the expansion symbol. There's a symbol on every single card that lets you know which expansion set it was printed in or which version of that card you're looking at. 
What they began doing is for common cards, they kept them in the dark or black color. For uncommon cards, they made them in that whitish gray color. And then rare cards started getting printed with that expansion set in a gold color. Then in 2008, Magic the Gathering introduced an even rarer form of card than just your standard rare. They introduced mythic rares. You can find those in sets after 2008, after Shards of Alara was printed in a burnt orange hue. Other valuable cards to look for are cards that are printed in foreign languages. Magic the Gathering is played all over the world, and one of the things that you can look for in particular here in the United States or North America are cards that are not printed in English. It is quite common to find cards selling for more money or selling faster because they are printed in Japanese, Italian, Russian, Spanish, French. And just like anything that gets printed, there's going to be mistakes at the press. So if you find anything like a miscut or full sheets or misprints of any kind as you become more familiar with these cards, those could be extremely valuable and hyper rare. And since these are very collectible, when you're looking at cards and you're trying to figure out how to price them, condition truly matters. A card that is absolutely pack fresh or near mint is going to be a lot more valuable than the same card if it's in heavily played or moderately played condition with fraying to the corners and edges. So bear that in mind when you're trying to figure out the value of a card. Foils are nothing more than really shiny, expensive pieces of cardboard. This card right here is not very valuable. This is a $3 rare card, but it's kind of crazy what happens when you wrap it in something fancy. Here's the same card in foil form. All of a sudden, this $2 to $3 card just became $18 to $20 based on this feature. Makes it rare. Other tradable collecting card games are going to refer to these as something like holograms or specials. They play the same, they get used the same way in the actual deck that people are playing with, but you're going to spend almost $20 for this one. There are people that will spend hundreds and thousands of dollars to make every single card in their magic deck a foil. Not that I know anything about that. So when I'm looking for magic cards that I want to be able to sell, there are a couple of specific places that are my absolute favorites to find them. And the number one place that I love finding magic cards is at garage sales. These are going to be typically the cheapest place to find entire collections or really rare cards. A lot of times I score really big at garage sales because let's face it, mom and dad have no idea what these cards are worth. They see them as junk and they put them out there and they want them gone. So they're looking for somebody like me that comes up to them and says, I'll, I'll give you $10 right now for this full binder. And they say, yes. And by the way, I have another bunch of boxes of magic cards underneath that table. And the next thing you know, you've got hundreds and thousands of dollars of merchandise in your car on your way to make some bank. Now, my second favorite place to find magic cards super cheap in large quantities is actually Craigslist. Well, correction, it's Craigslist and other platforms like Mercari. You can find entire collections posted up there, relatively cheap, and in particular, older cards that could be extremely valuable. But my favorite place to find Magic the Gathering cards is actually at your local comic book and trading card shop. So keep in mind, they're in business to make money as well, so you're going to find that there's more of a markup because they're a little more knowledgeable about what they've got. But it's a fabulous opportunity to go in there, not just to find the supplies that you're going to need to sell these and ship them safely, but also because relationships matter. And if you can go in there and you can create a relationship with someone that has access to all of these cards, especially if it's a shop that will actually conduct Friday Night Magic events and tournaments, they've got access to all the supply. I am attacking, but with a newly summoned Spark Ghast who has Trample, Four damage to your planeswalker. Oh! So if you can strike up a deal where you can buy things in bulk from them or you can buy things wholesale from them, a lot of times you're going to find some really valuable merchandise that they've been sitting on for years. And that's really what you want to be in this scenario. You want to be a solution to whatever problem they have as far as moving supply and generating cash flow. 
Now that I've told you a little bit about what they are and where to find them, I got to tell you about how to sell them. So what I want to do is I want to give you a little bit of background on how they're used and how they're played. A player would have to create their own deck based on a series of cards. And for most of these cards, a player is not allowed to have more than four copies of the same card. So typically when you look online, Magic the Gathering cards are going to be sold either individually as just one copy or in play sets of four. For expensive, more sought after cards, I prefer to sell them in listings of just one because if you sell them individually, you will make more money on each. But selling play sets of four copies of a card is super valuable as well. If you're looking at a card that is really only worth about $2 on its own, that is the type of card that I love to sell in play sets of four. That way, instead of selling one card for $2, which would not be worth it, I could sell four copies of that card and sell that play set for 7 or $8, and then there's actual profit there. And ultimately, this is important to know because if you get into buying in bulk, you're really going to want to monetize as much as you can. Now, remember something that I said before. Condition is very important, not just in how you source these and how you list them accurately, but it's also really important to make sure that if you sell these cards, you have a way of getting them to your buyer safely. If you really want to make a buyer that happens to be a collector very upset, Go ahead and ship them in whatever way and have them arrive at their doorstep all bent up. That's no bueno. So let me go ahead and show you how it is that I ship it that sets me apart from other sellers. Now here's how I ship them out. Step number one, take a penny sleeve and put your card inside upside down. Then put that inside of a rigid plastic top loader. Ultra Pro is a great brand for this. Then I sandwich that between two pieces of cardboard. After that, put a piece of tape on each edge to keep it secure and tight. And finally, I take the entire package and I put it inside of a bubble mailer. Seal it, good to go. Pay a lot of attention to this because the way that you ship your items will definitely communicate to your buyer that you care about their investment, especially when you start talking about some more expensive cards, valuable cards. This is not gonna cost you very much to ship. It's gonna be three to four ounces for the package, so it will ship first class for either $275 or $3. But if you do that part correctly, not only are you gonna limit your returns, you're actually going to wildly improve your positive feedback. But here's the question of the day. Have you been selling in any other niches besides media this last month? If so, go ahead and put in your comments down below and let us know what you've been doing. Well, that's all for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed this video, if you want to see me make more videos like this one, please remember to share, like, and subscribe to support the channel. If you haven't given this video a like yet, go ahead and do that now. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and tap on that book bag right there. And while you're in there, turn on those bell notifications so that you know every time I post a new video. Until next time, let's go make some money.